We're now in 2022 and there's been a few changes since my last Billionaire's Money Guide in 2021. So in this video, I'll be letting you know the best ways to make money in GT Online, what to buy, how to maintain it, and also what not to buy to help you become as rich as me. In my eight years of playing, I've made almost $2 billion and without really even trying. Unlike some people who grind money because they actually suck at the game. Hello YouTube. So without further ado, let's get to it. This is a world premiere. So let's start with the king of money making in GTA, the Kea Perico Heist. You first need to get yourself a Kasatka submarine from Warstock Cash and Carry website. They start at just over 2.2 million, but can rise to over 9 million depending on what upgrades you buy. Depending on how much money you already have, will depend on how much you want to spend. If you're not too flush, then all you really need is the base model. This will unlock the ability to take on a Kea Perico Heist. The most money you can make in one finale here is anything from 900,000 up to around 2.5 million as a solo player. To make the most money from this heist, you first want to activate hard mode. To do this, you must complete a heist finale and then wait 5 to 10 minutes until Pavel texts you to say that you can do it all again. You then have 48 minutes in which to activate it. You can do this by simply going to the control panel in your sub and starting it. You don't need to gather the intel right away, you can do that whenever you like, but this will keep hard mode activated. The difference in hard mode versus normal mode is each primary target pays out more money, and the bonus for completing the elite challenge is doubled from $50,000 to $100,000. The highest paying primary target is the Panther, paying out just over $2 million, but you'll only ever see this about twice a year in special event weeks. The next best target is the Pink Diamond, which gives you $1.43 million on hard mode. Then it's the Bearer Bonds, which pays $1.21 million, Ruby Necklace is $1.1 million, and the Sinsimito Tequila is only $990,000. You can get around another $440,000 or so if you stock up on secondary loot. Before the Tuners DLC, you could get into the locked secondary rooms by using a little glitch, but this has since been patched. This means you can't get gold as a solo player anymore, so you have to travel a bit further to fill your bags. So the next best loot is cocaine, which will give you around another 440,000. You may get a painting or two in El Rubio's office, and each artwork collected will give you around $180,000, so two will give you 360,000 or so. Cash pays out the least, so avoid that, and if you need to, then grab some weed. That said, the best option for taking on Keo Perico is to do this as a two player. This means you can grab three gold stacks in a compound to fill each of your bags, totaling almost half a million each. The heist will be done a lot quicker as you don't need to go looking for a secondary loot around the map. And time is money. Add on another $100,000 for completing the Elite Challenge, and if you take 85%, you could earn as much as just over $2.65 million with the Panther, or just over $2 million with the Pink Diamond. And don't forget to grab the extra money in El Rubio safe, which averages at around $80,000. If you want a guide on how to complete the K Perico heist from start to finish in just 30 minutes, then check out my speedrun guides, which I'll leave links for in the description below. The next thing you want to buy is an agency. I must admit, I wasn't impressed initially with the contract DLC, but the more I played it and learned, the more I liked it. And I also discovered a giant exploit. The best thing about the agency is the payphone assassination missions, which will only take you around 3 minutes on average to complete and they pay out a whopping $85,000 for each one completed in a certain way. There is usually a 20 minute cooldown on these, but if you save your progress and close the game and restart it, the cooldown is gone, meaning $85,000 every 6 minutes or so. Even better was how these missions had an extra 50% bonus payment only a week after they came out, meaning every assassination paid out nearly $130,000, and I'm sure it'll come around again at some point later in the year. These are great ways to make quick money. There's also the security contract missions that pay between $30,000 to $80,000. But even better than that, the more of these contracts you do, the more passive income money is added to your office wall safe as a whole, meaning it fills up faster. The wall safe tops out at $250,000. It's also worth mentioning that you'll get some bonus money for completing some story missions for the first time, like playing as Lamar, for example. The story mode missions payout is trash, and the $1 million for completing the finale isn't really worth the effort. Next up is the Arcade. Not only can you do the Diamond Casino heist from here, where you can earn big bucks from the heist, especially when diamonds come out, but it's another passive income business, which has recently had its safe capacity doubled from just $50,000 to $100,000. Having an arcade full of machines means you'll make $5,000 every 48 minutes, which doesn't sound like much at first, but look at it as a long-term investment, which will end up being free money just for opening a safe. 
The arcade machines range anywhere from $90,000 to $420,000, so be prepared for a huge payout initially. The best passive income business is by far the bunker. The cheapest bunker starts at just under 1.2 million, but the location is terrible. I advise getting a Thompson Scrapyard location as it's right on the highway for easier selling missions. Make sure you max out all of your upgrades to produce faster and better stock. This could set you back around 4 million in total, but you'll earn way more than that in time. A full bunker will sell for just over $1 million, but now and again these are put on double money weeks, meaning over $2 million, which can be produced every single day if you're online enough. However, a full bunker will need at least two, maybe three people to sell it. What you really want to do is buy the supplies for 75,000, which will then arrive in the next five minutes. This means not wasting half an hour filling it up and you can sell each 75K worth of stock as a solo player for $210,000, a pure profit of $135,000 for each sale. The main benefit of the bunker is how it makes money for you simply by being online, leaving you free to do whatever else you want to do with it working in the background. You can also just look at your security cameras while AFK and you won't be kicked from the lobby. It takes 12 hours to fill a bunker, but just under two and a half hours if you want to sell it solo. So buy the supplies, come back after two and a half hours, buy supplies before selling, then sell. Rinse and repeat. These can only be sold in a public lobby and you'll get a payment bonus for each person in the lobby, but more people equals more griefers. The other passive business you want is the nightclub. Another one of those that needs a lot of money up front but will always pay you back. To have the nightclub function at full capacity, you'll need to spend just under 2.6 million on upgrades, on top of the 1 million plus for the base nightclub, plus any other interior upgrades you would like. On top of that, you also need to own a bunker, crate warehouse, hangar, cocaine warehouse, meth warehouse, and counterfeit cash warehouse. The most employees you can have working on any type of product is five from a possible seven, which is why you want the best five businesses, as you can see from this breakdown. Do not buy the weed warehouse or the document forgery business. You won't want to run the others apart from the bunker as a business, so you just want to buy the cheapest. Cheapest hangar is 1.2 million, cheapest crate warehouse is just 250,000, but you will need a CEO office to buy that, and they start at $1 million. Cheapest coke business is just under a million, cheapest meth lab is just over a million, and the cheapest counterfeit cash warehouse is 845,000. All this will add up to at least over $6 million. Add on a 2.6 million for the nightclub itself and the bunker, and that's around 13 million to get started. A huge initial layout, but just like the arcade, look at this as a long-term investment. I've made in excess of 128 million from mine. It's just a really easy business to run and you'll earn your money back from just nine sales. It takes around 67 hours to fill up a nightclub, but again, it's a passive income business. So just sell it when your five types of stock are full and it's 1.5 million each time. You'll only ever have one selling vehicle, so it's great for solo players. Do not bother with the popularity missions, they are a waste of time. There is now just one more business you need to own and that's the auto shop. The auto shop grants you access to a selection of eight mini heists. The only one you really want to do is the union depository contract, which pays out $300,000, but has been known to be on double money during special event weeks, paying $600,000. It's very simple and can be done in about 20 minutes, or even quicker with more players. Myself, Blue Bear and Kenny currently hold the speed run world record for this in 15 minutes 21. So if you'd like some tips on how to do it faster, then check out my union depository speed run guide. I'll leave a link in the description. If you don't have the Union Depository contract on your planning board, there's a very easy way to get it. Simply select any other contract, then back out and leave the auto shop. Call up to Santa and cancel the job. Hey y'all, need something? They go back in and the board would have changed jobs. Just keep doing this until you get the contract you want. The other way of earning money is by modifying some customer cars. This only takes a few minutes to modify and deliver. A top-end car will earn you $30,000, which isn't much, but will also grant you some car meet rep points. All five auto shops are all under $2 million as a base price. Just make sure you add in the car lift for $650,000 so you can house two customer cars instead of one. If you want, you can employ two staff for $770,000. The reason you may want staff is if you get a low-cost car to modify and you can't be bothered to deliver it yourself. But you will lose a bit of money though. If for whatever reason the car gets destroyed, simply return back to the auto shop and it will be back there fully modified as before. You can then just go ahead and deliver it again. And last but not least, another way to make a ton of money is by completing the Criminal Mastermind Challenge for the original apartment heist. 
To do this, you have to complete all five heists in order with the same team and without losing any lives. On an average playthrough, it should take around six and a half hours. You will need a proficient team to complete this, but doing so will net you a bonus of $10 million each for completing it, as well as another $1 million loyalty bonus for doing it with the same team, and another $1 million for completing the All In Order award, let alone the payouts for each completed finale. All in all, you're looking at each player earning well over $13 million. We actually completed the Criminal Mastermind Challenge with my second character during the Double Money Week on these heists, and each made about $15 million. The main advice I'd give is to make sure everyone purchases the heavy utility vest and saves it as an outfit. This means you can equip it during a heist. This will give you around twice as much damage protection, and after all, your main mission is not to die. If you'd like to see how I completed it recently and what strategies to use, as always, I'll leave the links in the description. Now on to the businesses you don't want. Apart from using them to stock up your nightclub, do not buy the MC warehouses and use them as a business. I've made an extensive guide on how bad these are with a link to that in the top right. The hangar pays reasonably well, but the effort involved to stock it up is nowhere near worth it. CEO crates also pays well, but the missions are boring and tedious, and it takes way too long to fill up a warehouse. I've also done a guide on these, which you can see in the top right. And the vehicle warehouse should now only be purchased to store your special vehicles in. And there you have it. Seven of the best ways to make money in GTA Online in 2022. Let me know in the comments if you've got any more tips and tricks you think I've missed. So if you found this video useful, please drop it a like and maybe consider subscribing for more. I'm Beats Down and I'll see you in the next one.